here. Uh, welcome to Wednesday, uh, and it is December the 28th. We are inching closer and closer to the end of 2022 and getting closer to the beginning of 2023. Uh, so we've got a new year coming. I hope that uh, you take the next couple of days. I know uh, some of you are just getting on here. I hope you take the next couple of days uh, and just kind of uh, evaluate maybe 2022, looking into the new year. What are some what are some improvements that can be made in your life? Maybe some changes from 2022, some things maybe that did not go well that need to go better in 2023. Uh, and kind of game plan and prep for those types of things. Uh, kind of use it as a refreshing uh, of, of your life uh, and uh, begin things anew in 2023. And then I would encourage you and I'll encourage you after the new year, don't get discouraged if you fail a little bit in 2023. If you don't uh, follow through with some of your plans, hey, get back up and, and restart again. But man, this is a great time to just kind of evaluate uh, life, evaluate your relationship with the Lord, what you can do to improve upon it, uh, your service to the Lord, what you can do to uh, to serve the Lord even greater in a greater way in 2023. And so uh, let's uh, take some time over the next couple of days and just kind of reflect uh, and prepare for a new year. I think that's very important. Now, we're in Job chapter 15, and I would encourage you to follow along here today. Job chapter 15, we're going to begin in verse number 7. Remember, Job is speaking. Uh, and Job is kind of uh, really defending himself a bit, defending his uh, his uh, conversation, his response to what has happened in his life. Uh, and really he's responding to the false accusations that his friends have made about him and his life. You remember Job is one that feared God. He eschewed evil. He was perfect. He was upright. But his friends think that, man, he's involved in something. He's been hiding some sin, uh, and that's why he's being judged. And so Job is really defending himself uh, here in this uh, in this passage. And, and we're going to see kind of a change here uh, in what Job is uh, saying. Uh, kind of we'll, we'll get into that just a little bit here uh, this morning as, as, he, as he then turns his attention to God and what God is doing in his life. But let's look at verse number 7. Uh, Job chapter 15, I'm sorry, Job chapter 16 and verse number 7. But now he hath made me weary. Thou hast made me desolate all my company. Thou hast filled me with wrinkles which is a witness against me and thy leanness rising up in my uh, rising up in me beareth witness to my face what is job describing here job's describing really what life how life has kind of treated him uh, we see the mention of wrinkles here uh, as he's aging uh, obviously his visage changes as he ages but i want you to think for a moment what job has gone through how much that effect has affected him obviously because of the uh, 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 the the disease that is ravaging his body. His body has changed. His physical appearance has changed. We see that verse number eight with the wrinkles. Uh, we say, which is a witness against me. His uh, his look uh, really tells the story of his life and what he has gone through. He says, my leanness, what does that mean? His his frailty, the frailty of his body, uh, and maybe even uh, uh, the weight loss that has happened because of what he has gone through. You note verse number seven as well, jump back up there. This is an emotional thing. He says, but now he hath made me weary. We see physically he's worn out. Now it's made desolate all my company. Uh, and so man, on every front, Joseph has been hit, or Joseph, Job has been hit on every front here, uh, and emotionally, uh, spiritually, physically, just worn out because of what he has gone through. Uh, and as we noted yesterday, his friends has, haven't helped out much. Uh, his friends have only piled on. Now, verse number nine, uh, he teareth me in his wrath. Who hateth me? So now he's like uh, the whoever's attacking him, uh, man. They they obviously they hate him, but they he teareth me in his wrath. He's just being uh, Job is just feeling torn apart. His heart is broken. His his mind is spent. Uh, his energies are spent. Uh, let's continue. He gnasheth upon me with his teeth. Mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me. We see the. Uh, Job, Job kind of saying, man, my, my enemy is, is singling me out and all of his focus is on me. And we know that Job is being, is, is being attacked by Satan. Uh, God is allowing Satan to afflict him 
uh, and man, Satan's eyes are, are, are sharpened upon Job. Verse number 10. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. Uh, maybe speaking of his friends here, as they have uh, a gaped upon him with, the, with their mouth and, and their talk, and uh, they've reproached him. They gathered against him, and they uh, are rising up against him and piling on him. Have you ever been there in your life to where, uh, man, it just seems like everything's against you? Uh, and and there's, there's, there appears to be no way out. Maybe you've been there. Uh, let me tell you something. As we consider this and just uh, thinking about being in difficult situations in your life where it seems like, man, everything's just piling on, know this, that, that there's a God that loves you. There's a God that is in control. There's a God that, uh, and I'll say this, uh, there's a God that allows things into our life. Why? to grow us. Uh, and so we must be willing to learn uh, uh, even in the midst of great sorrow and great trial in our life. And then I will say this as well, not just the fact that sometimes God allows these things in our life to test us and to grow us, but sometimes we bring things on ourselves because of the sin that we have in our life. Sometimes we bring things on ourselves because of how we respond to situations. Uh, and so we need to make sure that our response is right. We can, we can uh, listen, we can make our situation better by our response, or we can make it worse by our response. It kind of reminds me of maybe you've heard stories or seen stories, maybe you've seen maybe in a cartoon or on TV, and maybe you've watched a video on YouTube where, where somebody does something, something happens to an individual, and they get mad. They get upset. Maybe you've seen this. Uh, and what do they do sometimes in these videos? And maybe you've heard stories. Hopefully it hasn't happened to you. But, man, they, they get so mad. They get so upset because of something that happened. And they go and they punch something. They punch a wall or, or something like that. And what happens? Uh, oftentimes, what do they do? They make a situation worse because now maybe their hand is broken because they punched on a wall. Uh, now uh, they made the situations worse because now they've got to repair that which they have punched. Uh, and man, uh, man, the, the initial situation was tough and hard, but now it's been compounded because of our response. And uh, uh, Job here is saying, man, I've got all this going against me. Job's friends are there. They piled on as well. Uh, they've gaped with their mouth. They've reproached him. They've gathered against him. Man, things are just going up. Uh, and, and Job can either respond negatively or respond in the right way. And that really will determine uh, his success as he goes through this t trial and this testing. Now, uh, man, we've gone too long. Uh, let's look at verse number 11 really quick. Job then, then switches his attention, talking about his situation, his problem. And really communicating with his friends. And now he turns his attention to God. Look at verse number 11. God has delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. Now, Job, I don't think, completely understands everything that's going on in his life. But he does know this. He knows that God has allowed this to happen to him. Okay, God doesn't know the interaction between, or I'm sorry, Job doesn't know the interaction between God and Satan. Uh, but Job does know this, that God is the one that has allowed this into his life. He says, God has delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over to the hands of the wicked. Job says this, I was at ease. He had everything, but he hath broken me asunder. Job had everything going for him, and now he's got nothing. He hath also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. Uh, Job saying, man, I've, man, I've lost everything. My whole world has been turned upside down. God has allowed this to happen to me. Uh, he delivered me into the ungodly. And so Job kind of looking and knowing that God is in control, and that's a great, great place to be, knowing that God is in control. And what, a great, what a great attitude looking into it. Hey, what I'm going through, God's allowed to happen. So what does that, what does that mean for Job? If God's allowed it to happen, what? God will strengthen me to get through. Man, what a great, what a great thought. And, and let's be mindful of that in our life every day, that God allows things into our life. And you know what? If God allowed it, God will see me through it. 
Man, what a, what a great thought. Uh, verse number 13, his archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. You think about that, that, that breach upon breach. Uh, uh, and man, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. You remember uh, the early chapters of Job where a servant came and says, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. His wife comes, curse God and die. His friends come, stare at him uh, for days upon end and then uh, just pile on. And it just seems like for Job, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. Verse number 15, I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin. Uh, Job says, man, I, I, I'm in mourning. He's got the sackcloth on. And he's experiencing great heartache and dip, difficulty. He's in mourning. He says, and defiled my horn in the dust. Really, that uh, is kind of a picture of, of really the stating that, man, my strength is gone, he's saying. Uh, I, I just, I can't go on. And that's why, believer, when you when you get to this point in your life where you say, man, I don't have the strength to go on. I don't know if I can do it anymore. Let me say this. That is not the time to despair. That's the time to rejoice. Because when you get to the point where you say, I can't do this anymore. I can't handle this. That is the, the best place to be because you only have one place to turn. And that's back to the Lord. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. When you get to that point, I can't do this. I need God. What a place to be. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that come to that point, and maybe at even this time of year, they get to that point and they say, I can't do this anymore. What do they do? There are many that, that do drastic things. Some people take, them, take their life uh, and there are some that, that harm their bodies. But you know the natural response when we get to that point where, hey, I can't handle this, I can't do this anymore. I need God's strength. Uh, let me see if I can find it here just really quick. Uh, another verse for us. Uh, Isaiah 40 and verse number 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hey, don't despair. Uh, don't quit. Don't give up. Wait on the Lord, and he will renew your strength. It says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you get to that point to where your strength is gone, where you just feel like quitting, giving up, where it doesn't seem worth it, know this, that's the right place to be because now, we can trust God and rely upon God for his strength. Uh, and they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's where I think Job is at. Job is at his wit's end. He's lost everything, uh, his health, his wealth, his family. And he can't do it on his own anymore. He's got to say, God, I need you. God, you've allowed this to happen. God, you will see me through. Uh, and, and that's the way it is in our life as well. God allows things into our life. Let's trust him and follow his leading uh, in those those difficult times. Okay, uh, I'm going to end with that today. We went a little bit longer today, uh, but let me give a couple shout outs to those who are watching live. Uh, and once again, let me say thank you so much for being on. If you haven't shared our Power Up, I would encourage you to share it. I th it looks like we've got one share so far. Uh, so I would encourage you to share if you can. Now, uh, Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Have an awesome day today. Lynette, good morning to you. And hopefully it's a little warmer for you uh, in Arkansas today. Uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both. And hope you guys have a great day. Uh, if you're in northern Michigan, I know, Brian City, you're, you're here, Cliff and Karen here in northern Michigan. I'm supposed to warm up a little bit today towards the end of the week. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, Perry, good morning to you. Hope you have a great day. Uh, Gene, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, David, good morning to you as well. Thank you for your faithfulness and watching. Uh, and then, yes, uh, Cliff and Karen, yes, uh, don't forget church tonight, 6 o'clock. 
uh, one final time together for 2022. Uh, and so hopefully you can be in church tonight uh, in, in this uh, final, uh, final meeting gathering time for us as a church family in 2022. Uh, Lee, Angie, and family, good morning to you guys as well. Paula, good morning to you. Hope you have a great day. And Jody, greetings to you out west. Hope you have an awesome day. Lord bless you all. Thank you so much for being on today. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow at 830. Look forward to uh, finishing up Job chapter 16 tomorrow. Uh, but that'll happen tomorrow. Lord willing, we'll see you all tonight. Have a great day, everybody.